All right, let's see how to use Firebase rules to secure our data. Uh, so the the first thing that I'll mention is that the rule system actually is is pretty powerful, right? Um, because we do have these read and write rules, right? A link to the documentation here. Uh, so it's so imp important to have. So so let's notice what what we start off with, with here. So we have rules um, in a JSON format, and what we say is is for the passwords path that any password that's in there, all right, needs um, two fields. So um, service, all right, needs um, and password. Service needs to, whenever new data comes in, it needs to be a string. Okay, so it's going to run a validation rule on that, and password likewise okay and that's those are the ones that we just went over there are very basic right so this is if we think about this it's very similar to what we would have had um, in movie quotes and in fact what we did use in in movie quotes this has nothing to do with authentication it has everything to do with with sort of requiring that everything live within a certain path um, and that the data is formatted in a certain way these are the validation rules okay now it turns out that we have some different options as far as how we want to um, structure our data. Um, we're gonna choose a little bit different structure here um, as one option. We're gonna use one option now, we're gonna use a second option in the lab. Uh, but let's let's talk about uh, what, what's, what's going on. So for login, uh, one option is to basically sandbox each person's data, right? So what this means is that here um, inside Password Keeper, um, that you know, I, I'm going to have a users level, and that users within that that um, that node is going to have a child node um, for each user of my system. Right now, you can see I've got a couple right here. Um, so myself and, and Dave Fisher. Um, if we also um, look within here, all of that person's data. So in other words, so that each one of these is a password key, and then the password object. Each one is is sort of you know sandboxed within that um, within that subtree, right? So when I ask for Bowtel, um, that's going to be the only part of the tree that 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 Bowtel that I'm going to have access to. Um, uh, so I'm not going to have access to to Fisher's data, right? Um, so how do I do this, right? If I look in my rules, all right? So the the kind of the JSON format of that mimics what's going on here um, in my JSON tree. Uh, so I have users, and users has, now you'll notice we see this dollar sign again here. I guess I didn't, haven't done a very good job of explaining it yet, uh, but dollar signs are used for variables, right? So instead of having to hard code, Bautel has these rules, Fisher DS has these rules, and every other user has the same rules. Um, this is, it's, um, so this is a, 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 a variable, right, that we're gonna use here. So, so dollar sign UID. So each UID, each user that I see in there, is going to have the following rules. So let's look at them. So the first one is that read and write, if we look at it, they have to be authenticated, right? So so there's an auth variable, all right, that's that's um, that's set up when you whenever you're logged in of any type. Um, and as long as that's not null, and if you're authenticated, your if your UID matches this one here, right? The one in the path. So if I'm logged in with a UID of Bautel, then I'm going to have read-write access um, to the, to this portion here to 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 Bautel, okay? Um, and if I'm not, then this condition right here is going to be false, and I will um, you know I'll, I'll I'll jump out there, okay? It won't won't let me in, okay? Now within what's in there, this is isn't new, right? This is what we saw in, in our last uh, in our last slide in the introduction here. We're going to have passwords that are that are validated a certain way, okay? So that's the structure for doing that. Um, I would suggest that you go ahead and add these rules. I think I have them in the slide, um, in the notes off the bottom of the slide. So you can go ahead and copy and paste those in now. I'm gonna do the same thing. Okay, so you can come in here, copy and paste them in, and publish them. And again, you can you can use this simulator if you wanna, if you wanna check it out. Um, so authenticated, um, you know, my UID, uh, let's see, so I, I actually don't have any, any data in here, so using the simulator right now um, isn't going to make too much sense. But let's just, let's just say, um, let's check the rules here. So if I'm Bowtel and I want to check read um, to the top level, right? if I run this, okay, 
um, it's denied. Um, what if I try to read users Bautel? I'm gonna run this guy. And then it comes up and it says that, it, that it's allowed, right? What if I wanna write users Bautel and within here, um, you know, I, I want to put some some information, right? So so foo, right? Um, then we look up here, and it's it's going to let me write um, into this, right? So so pretty decent. Uh, we we can we can check that right there if if you want. Not a big deal either way. All right. So those are um, some rules. I'll mention if if these rules seem a little bit you know a little bit quirky um, to you, or maybe I don't know you you're 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 sitting there saying, wow, I'm really glad I got those rules because I don't really know how to, how to use them. Um, we'll say that, that there's links to the documentation, right? So, so if you wanna do that. The other thing that, that I will mention is that there are other um, ways that you can use to generate these, these rules. So I'm not gonna talk about it now, but one um, scheme that they were working on uh, was to, to have a compiler, compiler called Bolt. Uh, Bolt let you, um, had some type systems and it would let you with, with a very small amount of code generate a whole bunch of JSON rules, right? Um, it turns out that they're actually working on a replacement that they say is even better, right? And I've looked at, at some stuff. It's, it's essentially, from what I understand, it's what they use in, in the, the, uh, the new storage uh, component of Firebase. Uh, and they look pretty decent, right? But they're not ready yet, so they're, they're on the way. So I'm, I'm, not gonna, I'm not really gonna focus on that uh, right now, okay? Um, so let's, let's, uh, let's move on, right? Um, we, I will say right now that, that because we did that, we actually broke things um, and you're gonna get some, some errors in the logs. Um, you're gonna get a, a, a permission denied because we're not authenticated. One other thing that you're gonna wanna do, because we added this extra level in, in our JSON, um, you're gonna wanna change when you do switch to password fragment. It's not just empty quotes anymore. It's gonna be to go into to users, right? So you'll, you should go ahead and, and make that change all right, and it's kind of fun. I'm, I'm leaving you here in a broken state so that you'll have to come back next time and learn how to do email password authentication. All right, see you in a few.